Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Smash Fish. This is a series where you guys post your guitars on the Discord server so I can talk shit about them. Nah, no, I'm just kidding. We had a great first episode. Some of you are playing some really cool stuff. So I've got the Discord channel popped up right here. And oh my god, there's so many entries. All right, show me what you got. First into the fish tank, Julian wants an SG because it looks like he doesn't have one. Before I even get to the guitars, I really appreciate that pedal board. Very much like mine, a significant percentage of that pedal board is just noise gate. Like the biggest thing on there is the power supply. That Victory Super Kraken also looks dope. How do you like it, by the way? It's one I've been really curious about. I've been trying to work with them because I know Mark Tremonti, who's one of my favorite guitarists ever, he loves the Krakens. Alright, guitars, on the left, the Flying V. I'm not a huge fan of Flying Vs, sometimes they're really cool, like Brent Hines Silverburst. This one's interesting though, I'm not familiar with it, but it looks like a signature model, like there's a signature on the pick guard, which is a weird shape. Also looks like it says something on the truss rod cover, and those inlays are obviously not the Gibson standard. I can't quite tell what it says on the pick guard from this image quality. Uh... Wait, does that say Hendrix? I know he's had Gibson models. The only one I'm really familiar with, though, is, like, the psychedelic-looking Flying V. Oh, shit. So I just looked it up, okay? All right, so what Julian has here is a super limited edition Hendrix Flying V. According to this reverb listing, only 400 made. It's from the early 90s. It says Hall of Fame on the back of the headstock, I guess, to commemorate when he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So that's really cool. You got the Hendrix factor, the limited edition factor. You got the gold hardware. And I love how it's got the vintage style tuners with the snot colored buttons you don't really get that on flying v's so it's got a lot of really cool stuff it's also a flying v though so uh i'm gonna have to pass <laughs> no I'm kidding i mean it's hendrix and it's got all this cool shit going for it. yeah it's a it's a smash no uh, i didn't forget that i was totally filming this video you forgot that you were filming this video. Yeah, so uh i apologize this is meant to be a fun weekly thing and life has just kicked me in the ass but we're back now. I'm also supposed to be flying out to see family tomorrow, so uh, I've just gotten my third 5G firmware update. Kind of feeling like crap, but I also really want to see my grandma. Anyways, so where were we? Oh yes, the pedal board of dreams. All right, so we've already taken a look at the Flying V, which is very, very cool. Is that super limited edition Hendrix model, the Hall of Fame one. And then on the right, that looks very interesting. It's a Washburn. I keep forgetting that Washburn is a company, to be honest. Kind of sad, because I know a lot of people have a lot of strong feelings about Washburn. But ever since Ola bought the Solar name, started his own company, Dean, obviously, well, maybe not so much anymore, produced the Dimebag guitar. It's like, what does Washburn even do nowadays? Oh, apparently this. Or this could be an old model. I don't know. Washburn kind of disappeared before I started paying attention to the industry. It kind of reminds me of like the best parts of Ibanez and Jackson combined. It's almost got like an Ibanez S body and then Jackson shark tooth inlays. Also, personally, neither Jackson nor Ibanez really do that much for me. Pass for me, next. And then the one in the middle, Telecaster, now we're talking. My tasting guitars have gone full dad this last couple of years. To be honest, they've kind of always been that way. Don't give me the pointy guitars. Give me the fucking Telecasters and Les Pauls. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't really know what this one is, but it's got the classic dad sunburst color. It's also got top binding, which I really, really like on Telecasters. And to be honest, they don't do enough. And then it's got the ashtray bridge, which I'm not a big fan of compared to the six saddle. It feels weird for palm mutes. So I don't know exactly what this is, but judging from the rest of your gear, I'm guessing that it's an American something and I'm giving it the dad stamp of approval as a smash so a lot of people in the first episode said saying what about you after every single guitar was kind of annoying well actually really annoying they threatened to unsubscribe fair enough I guess this time we'll do it by family picture so for guitars two smashes one pass on the wash burn love the victory amp definitely definitely a fan of that pedal board so what is that four out of five eighty percent approval overall I'm giving Julian a smash what do you think? Also, please, in the comments, tell me what this Washburn is. And tell me what you think of the brand. I'm really curious what people's perception is nowadays, especially from, like, different age groups. It's not like I've gone out of my way to not learn about that company. It just really hasn't been a part of my guitar playing life at all. So educate the f*** out of me. That was super aggressive for no reason. <laughs> we moved. All right, who's next? Dayman LP Gang. Yes! I am such a f***ing simp for Epiphone Les Pauls. Without 
the headstock, I already know exactly what this is. I don't know what it's called though. It's the old slash Epiphone Les Paul model. He called it something special, the Rossa, Rossa Corsa? Ro Rossi Corsa? Rasta Corset? I fucking can't remember. <laughs> All right, just cheated, just looked it up. Yeah, it's the Epiphone slash Rossa Corsa, and it means racing red in Italian, so I'm sure from there you can guess where that comes from. It's that classic Ferrari red with a flame top. You can tell it's an Epiphone, or maybe it's a Chibson uh, due to the large stud posts in the bridge, but yeah, Les Pauls and Ferraris, Smash. What are you thinking? What does Dayman get? A smash or a pass from you? So part of the reason I really like this Smash Fish series, all two episodes so far, is that it's kind of like a sneak peek into your guitar journeys. So hopefully you guys are getting that kind of vibe as well. And if you need more, revisiting key milestones from your guitar journey is exactly what Rob Scallon's Guitar Quest lesson from Guitario aims to capture. Yes, when you get a sponsorship involving Rob Scallon, you take it. I mean, the dude is just one of the best music YouTubers ever. I would say guitar YouTubers, but he's played metal on a theremin, a harp, a shovel. I <laughs> love that guy. Anyway, so Guitar Quest is a bit more of a beginner focused lesson course, but do not let that stop you trying it. It's not so much of a class as it is a game. Nine levels of challenges involving only the fun stuff about guitar. The jam session, playing the gig, the music video shoot, selling out, even a final boss battle. And if for some reason you don't like it, you got 90 days to get your money back. Realistically, you can probably finish Guitar Quest in less than 90 days if you want to be that way about it. If you're looking for something more advanced, Guitario's got over a thousand other lessons for all playing levels, different genres and theories, and they're running some amazing Black Friday deals, including lifetime memberships, over $800 in free bonuses. So check that out, click the link below to invest in your playing, improve your chops at a great price, and of course, it supports the channel as well. And while you're doing that, let's see what other instruments you guys are playing and whether whether or not they suck. I'm kidding, I'm sure they're fine. Uh, well, I guess we'll see. All right, next into the fish tank, it's Ice Cream Man, AKA Amy, Amy? All right, Amy, what you got? Huh, is that an Ibanez? There's so much going on with the body. It's like all this fender stuff that's been smashed together. You got the tally pickups, you got the offset body, you got the strat jack with a control knob on it. Oh, this is what, um, Yvette Young's signature model is based on, right? It's so crazy seeing an Ibanez that's not pointy as shit. I'm kidding. I know Ibanez is kind of like Schecter in that they're mostly known for the pointy shit, but low-key, they also do a bunch of crazy vintage-inspired models as well. For both Ibanez and Schecter, all the pointy stuff definitely gets most of the attention. I mean, that's kind of the point. They've got the bright finishes. They're completely specced out. Meanwhile, like, they're doing wacky stuff like this. I swear, the image quality isn't that good, so if that doesn't even say Ibanez on the headstock, I'm gonna look like a f***ing fool. Uh, I can't quite tell if it's the lighting or not, but if that's a roasted maple neck and fingerboard on an offset telly, I'm giving that a huge smash. I've said it a lot, like, I think that more traditional guitars are sometimes overlooked, when it comes to adding modern innovations like stainless steel frets, roasted maple fingerboards, and I definitely meant roasted maple necks, but roasted maple fingerboards are good too. Listen, and I'm just assuming here, but I would guess that even if you don't play metal, you'd still want better neck stability. You don't want it to move as much with temperature, humidity changes. And for a lot of companies, for some reason, modern also means metal. Anyways, whole different tangent, whole different conversation for another time smash on this offset tell. But what do you think? Are you giving Ice Cream Man a smash or a pass on his weird Ibanez thing? And last one, because I do have to kind of start packing for my flight tomorrow. Let's see what number one Washburn fanboy has. Is it a Washburn? No, it is not a Washburn. Bro, one, where were you like three guitars ago? And two, where's your Washburn? But I mean, in fairness, that is a really nice looking music man. <laughs> All right, so you know when people say Leo Fender got it perfectly right the first time with the Telecaster and the Stratocaster? No doubt, those are great guitars. There's a reason why we base so many guitars around those original designs. But in my opinion, the Music Man guitars are the ones that get it right. As much as I love American Fenders, and I do love American Fenders. Music Man guitars are just a step above. And yeah, there's a lot of Strat DNA in the Cutlass, obviously. Three single coils, the trem you f***ed up by not having a humbucker in the bridge, but that's on you. But like, look at the volume pop placement. It's not stupid close to the bridge. It doesn't get in the way of palm muting. That alone is a huge improvement. Like on my own bullet strat, that volume pot is gone. It's just a hole in the pit guard. And then you've got the spoke wheel truss rod adjustment. You can see the flame on the roasted maple neck 
even with this low quality picture on Discord. Obviously not all of it is Leo Fender design. Music Man guitars are just, if Leo Fender had the technology to do with guitars what we can do today, I believe this is what he would make. The only thing I'm still getting over with Music Man guitars is the 4x2 mini headstock. It's very weird looking. But other than that, the metallic blue that covered trim, I, I really like it. Smash. Except number one Washburn fanboy, where is your Washburn automatic pass? Nah, but uh, what are you thinking? What are you giving number one a Washburn fanboy? Smash or pass? And I think that is where we will call it for this episode. I know it's a bit of a short one. We'll try to do a longer one next time. Before we leave though, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Everybody, please stay safe out there. Uh, I've already seen some crazy shit and the holiday hasn't even started. So uh, yeah, everybody please be safe. And I'm pretty sure I filmed the outro with the intro because I usually do that. So Hunter from over a month ago, take us home. And that will do it for this episode of Smash Fish. Thank you so much for your submissions. There are literally so many. Appreciate the infinite content. If you wanna join in the fun as well, link to the Discord server will be in the description. It's also a really great community, so you should be joined anyways. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff, that way the algorithm gods smile upon the channel. Shout out to Remco and the rest of the amazing patrons for making this and all the other content possible. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video.